This is Passport Two, People and Places, brought to you by Jules Verne, taking you around the world, sharing memories, and introducing you to the people at the heart of everything we do. I'm Abby, and in this series, I'll be delving into past adventures, inside stories, future journeys, inspiring you to discover the wonders of the world. Hello. And welcome to the first episode of Passport 2, People and Places, brought to you by Jules Fern. I'm your host, Abby, and today I'm with the General Manager of Jules Fern, Debbie O'Neill. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Abby. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. How are you? I'm very well. I'm very excited. It's really exciting, isn't it? It is. This is brand new. A podcast has never been done before with Jules Fern, so this is exciting times. Yeah, absolutely. So why have we decided to launch a podcast? I think really mainly because we've been around for a long time. We've been around for over 40 years. It all started with that iconic journey that went from, you know, Victoria through to um, to Beijing in 1979. And um, I just feel we've got lots of stories to tell. There's lots to talk about. And through a podcast medium, I felt was the best way we could do it. And that's true. This is the best way for us to share our knowledge, our passion, our memories and our stories and everything that's going to happen in the future at Jules Verne as well. So why have we called our podcast Passport 2? Well, if you're familiar with the um, Jules Verne novel Around the World in 80 Days, you'll know that the main character, Phileas Fogg, had a French valet who travelled with him. He was called Jean Passport And that surname translates literally to goes everywhere. So we thought it would be perfect for this. That is perfect because we do go everywhere. So from a personal point of view, I just want to say thank you for letting me be the host of this podcast. I feel really privileged to be able to share not only my memories, but the memories of all of our guests in this series and all the stories that we have to share at Jules Verne. Well, you're welcome. And you really do have the best job in the world, don't you? I really do. I do. I get to travel all over the world. I get to meet our customers and our partners and I get to share some amazing experiences with with all of them. But it hasn't just started with me and this podcast. It started way before, Mm -hmm. as you said earlier, our first ever journey to Beijing from London, Victoria in 1979. Wow. And that was an idea born from our founder, Philip Morell, who you worked with, didn't you, Debbie? Yeah, I did, absolutely. And um, since he's been named as one of the global pioneers who's changed the way that we travel, and that was in an article in the Times a a couple of years ago or so, where they looked at several um, travel company founders who saw unique opportunities and and they they seized them. And absolutely, that was what, what he did. And I remember him saying to me once, it's when he flies, that's when he really got ideas and, and inspiration when, when he was in the air. Wow. I think a lot of people do that now. I think if you imagine modern flying, you're on a flight and you normally have that map that shows you your start point, your end point, and you fly over all of these different countries and you can zoom in and zoom out. And I think the sense of you know adventure can begin then because you see the names of places that you next want to go. And I I think the word pioneer as well is really telling because I believe that we're all pioneers here at Jules Verne. Some of the destinations that we get to visit and some of the stories that we've heard just in the office are truly mesmerising. Well, we go to some really unusual destinations, don't we? And you're right. I think when when, when you fly... It's a sense of adventure, but it, it's this thing about possibility, isn't it, really? You know, there's time to kill, yeah. um, being up in the air, time to dream, time to think about the destination you're going to, the next destination that you want to go to. So, yeah. And what's your next destination you want to go to? Oh, good question. I think for me, it probably would need to be Bhutan. I think Bhutan for me is that real far flung destination, you know, mm-hmm. that real far away place. Um, my husband's been, so I've, of course, I've heard his stories and I've seen the photos, but also we sponsor a child in Bhutan. Wow. Yeah, so we started sponsoring him about, I don't know, four or five years ago. He's in a rural part of, of, of Bhutan, but we get regular sort of messages and photos back from him. He's called Dawa and um, he's probably about 14 or 15 now, but it would be lovely to see what Bhutan's got to offer, but to meet him too. Yeah, that would yeah, be wonderful yeah. to meet him and experience be, that. Yeah. How about you? I think it's difficult to have 
a next destination on the list when the list just continuously grows. I'm really privileged that I get to hear some stories of people's travels. Um, we have people in the office who have traveled travel to Papua New Guinea, for example. Mm. That would be an amazing adventure. We have people who've just come back from Uzbekistan, Croatia. Um, so I think for me, the list is wherever the next flight can take me. I, I don't think I have a next destination in mind just as yet. Mm. Well, it's a big wide world out there, isn't there? There's so much choice available to us. And of course, that was taken away from us these past couple of years. We didn't have that choice. No. Um, and some countries are still still closed to tourists, aren't, aren't they? So um, it's, it's great that, we, that people are starting to travel again and, uh, and we've got that luxury back once more. Definitely. And I think for myself, it was a huge honour and a privilege to be on our first departure that we had since COVID-19. Mm, yeah. um, very sort of poignant for this time of year. I was actually on board Spirit of Chartwell mm -hmm. for our first departure of 2021, which is actually also named the Royal Barge. Um, Spirit of Chartwell is a beautiful barge that's currently in the Douro Valley. And I've just come back from a, my second week on board. And of course, this was the barge that was used for the Diamond Jubilee back in 2012 when it sailed down the Thames with the Queen and the, the Royal Family on it and with the founder of Jules Verne because it was, it was his barge. And I think this is a great moment of serendipity for us. We have the founder of Jules Verne who created this iconic journey from London, Victoria, all the way to China. Then in 2012, sailing on board Spirit of Chartwell down the Thames with the Royal Family for the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. Mm -hmm. And now in 2022, as the Queen celebrates her Platinum Jubilee, yeah. we will have customers sailing on this very same Royal Barge celebrating the Jubilee in Portugal, in the Douro Valley. Mm, fantastic, isn't it? And what a fabulous place to be. You yes. know, that you'd remember that, wouldn't you, in years to come? You know, where, where were you for the Platinum Jubilee? I was on the Royal Barge, you know, the very one that was used for the Diamond Jubilee. And she hasn't changed that much since the Diamond Jubilee in 2012 either. Yes, there's not the big red drapes hanging over the side, but the inside is very much the same. You walk on board, there's a black grand piano as the pianist plays as you check in. You've got these beautiful red plush chairs that the Queen and Prince Philip sat in during those festivities. It's just the most iconic and beautiful barge mm. and it's a real privilege to, to sail on her, mm. especially in such a, a wonderful and beautiful place in Europe. Well, it's amazing, isn't it? Just to get to, you know, to go somewhere like that to sail. I haven't been, my parents have, but I haven't been to that part of Portugal, but I understand the scenery is wonderful, but to be doing it on this barge must be, you know, it's even better, isn't it? It really is. And it really is touching. It really moves you um, to know that you are sailing on such an iconic part of history mm. and, and in such a beautiful part of the world as well. Yeah, wonderful. So we have our group of um, travellers that are going to be out there in Portugal celebrating on the Royal Barge for the Platinum Jubilee. What are you up to? Oh, well, we are having a street party mm -hmm. in my street. I think along with most of the UK, we are blocking off our streets. All the neighbours have different jobs to do and we're going to celebrate in style. But what about you, Debbie? Well, same here, actually. And it's nice, isn't it? I mean, we, we went to the trouble of applying for the, you know, going through the application process to have the road closed. We had a planning meeting at our neighbours, actually. And uh, there was a good turnout. Wow. You know, there was about 15 or 20 people. But that in itself was really nice because there were people who have lived in the same road as, as me for many years. I've never seen them before. So it was nice to meet people. And actually, it kind of brought about that real kind of um, community feel, you know, when people are getting involved and, and offering to make contributions and coming up with different ideas. And so well, now we're in the run up to the Platinum Jubilee and everyone's really looking forward to it and just hoping the weather's kind to us. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed for the weather in the UK mm. and the weather for our customers in on Portugal. the Douro. Yeah. Well, whatever you do to celebrate the Jubilee, we hope you have a fantastic bank holiday weekend and we look forward to sharing more stories with you soon. Yeah. Thank you for your time today, Debbie. Thanks for having me, Abby. It's been great.
We hope you've enjoyed the latest episode of Pass for Two, People and Places. Look out for our next episode where we'll be talking to more guests about the people and places that have inspired them the most. We'd love to hear your feedback, so please do get in touch. Thanks for listening. Thank you.